Welcome to Physics 12, Unit 2, Energy and Momentum. This unit is organized in two chapters. Chapter 4, Work and Energy, and Chapter 5, Momentum and Collisions. In this unit, we should be able to analyze the principles related to energy and momentum and assess the social and environmental impact of the technologies that applies those principles investigate the relationship between law conservation of energy and conservation of momentum and solve related problems demonstrate a good understanding of work energy momentum and law conservation of energy and conservation of momentum in one and two dimensions the big ideas here is that energy and momentum are conserved we're going to look at the law conservation of energy and conservation of momentum uh, mathematically and solve the problems and we're going to look at the technological application that involve energy and momentum that a positive and negative effect on those applications chapter 4 work and energy the main focus of this chapter is a mechanical work and mechanical energy law conservation of energy and application of this concepts after completing this chapter, we should be able to explain the concept of work, energy, friction, and work energy theorem. Explain the concept of the gravitational potential energy, conservation of energy, Hooke's law, elastic potential energy, and simple harmonic motion. Describe the technological application and the impact in a society. Analyze the relationship between work energy theorem and law conservation of energy and solve related problems section 4.1 work done by a constant force this section is uh, focused on work and is basically a review from grade 11. there's a close relation between work and energy so definition of the work is a change of energy and energy's ability to do work and mechanical work is done on object when a force displace that object so if there's no displacement the work is zero so it's about force and displacement this work depends on a direction of the force or a component of that force along the line of the displacement so the maximum work is done when a force is parallel to displacement formula is work is equal force times displacement so standard unit of work is Joule that's named after James Joule the English physicist for its for his uh, contribution on uh, energy field of the physics and the Joule is Newton's times meter because it's a force of uh, unit of force is Newton and unit of displacement is meter you have more than those two units for uh, work can be uh, since the Newton is kilogram meter per second square that means is kilogram times meter square over second square so uh, those are different way of uh, expressing the unit of joule work is a scalar quantity so that means it has magnitude only not direction However, work can have positive, negative, and zero value. Now, we're going to focus on positive and negative for now. If the force is at an angle to displacement, the only component of the force that is at the same line with the displacement does any work. The component that is perpendicular to that displacement does zero work. So take a look on that diagram. There's a force and component of the force that is along that displacement now they have the same direction that means that the work is positive so it's a product of force times cosine theta times delta d so that is the formula force cosine theta times delta d however you don't need to calculate that component by itself you just use the formula force times displacement 
times cosine theta that is between displacement and force. That's force, that is displacement, that is angle theta. So that can do all the work for you. Now, if the direction of the force or the direction of the component along the displacement line are in an opposite direction, then the work is negative. So if you see on the diagram before, displacement, which is direction of the motion here, and the force are at the same direction. Okay, on a diagram on the bottom, if you see the force of kinetic friction on a pack that is moving on an ice, it is in the opposite, opposite direction of the pack, hockey pack, that is moving on other direction. So you know that the, that angle here is 180 degree. So that's why it's negative because cosine 180 is negative one. That makes the work negative because if you multiply magnitude of kinetic force times magnitude of displacement, then multiply by negative one, that will give you a negative value for work. Now, force sometimes can be perpendicular to displacement of the object. For example, static force of friction that is applied on the tires of the car that undergoes circular motion. We're going to learn more about this later. It is a perpendicular to displacement, to the velocity of the car. So that means that work done by force of static friction on a car is equal to zero. So because cosine of 90 degree is zero and you multiply zero with any number, that will give you zero. General rule is a force that is everywhere perpendicular to the motion does zero work. For example, the force of gravity that keeps that moon or any satellite in orbit does zero work on a satellite or on a moon which is a natural satellite because that direction of the motion is a perpendicular to a force of gravity so based on that formula here cosine 90 degree is zero and any force and any displacement multiplied by zero will give you zero so another common thing that you might understand is that let's say that you have a backpack and you're carrying that all day that's heavy you're doing a lot of work but in a physics term you do zero work why because your displacement that is moving forward and the force that you're carrying it that against the gravity it is in a perpendicular it is in a 90 degree so using the same formula, FA, applied force or normal force, times displacement is zero, and the force of gravity, which is again perpendicular to displacement, does zero work on your backpack. So that is something that uh, it's hard to, to comprehend, but it's true. What you need to understand what you need to remember is direction of the displacement and direction of the force an angle between them make sure that those direction are that angle is measured between two vectors when the origins are at the same point or you can imagine that origins are at the same point Here's a summary of the work and its values. Work is a scalar quantity and can have positive, negative, and zero. And that value depends on angle between force and displacement. In order to determine correctly the angle between two vectors, we have to make sure that both vectors are at the same origin. So we can transfer one vector at the origin of the other. Take a look on the diagram. If those 
two vectors are transfer transferred at the same origin and the angle between those is less than 90 then work value is going to be positive why because a cosine theta is the one that determines the sign of the work we are using magnitude of force times magnitude of displacement so both of them are positive and if the cosine theta is positive zero or negative that is going to determine what is going to be value of work positive negative or zero so in a second case when the cosine theta is 90 so the force and displacement are perpendicular to each other because of the cosine 90 is zero that makes work of those two perpendicular forces equals zero now if the angle between those two forces two vectors is wider than 90 then if you can do that in your calculator if you want try to pick any number that is between 90 and 180 then you see that value of cosine of that angle is going to be negative with 180 which is going to be negative 1 so the the maximum value of the work as a negative is going to be when the angle between displacement and force is 180 and a maximum positive of the force and displacement is going to be when a force and displacement form a zero degree angle that means they are exactly at the same direction they are parallel to each other they are at the same direction now what if the displacement and the forces per se they are not drawn at the same origin then you can do it so you can trans transfer that displacement where the origin is and that will make clear that angle between forces is here is a 20 between between force and displacement is 20 between tension 2 and displacement is 30 but most important you're going to see that displacement and force of kinetic friction form not a zero degree but 180 degree is very important because direction are the opposite so the angle is 180 degree and if you try the cosine of 180 degree is negative one so that makes the work done by kinetic force of friction is negative now how to calculate the network if more than one force act on an object then you can actually calculate work done by individual forces so work done by force one on that uh, along the line of the displacement and plus work done by force two plus work done by force three and so on and so forth remember that consider the displacement to be like an x-axis since that is a horizontal in this case then you can find a component of those forces on x-axis and you can multiply by displacement so f1x times delta d plus f2x times delta d plus f3x times delta d but remember if we have all displacement the same we can factor it then what is left there is sum of x component of all those forces that are in diagram but sum of all component makes f net x so now total work or network is equal f net x times delta d or the component of the net force that is along the line of the displacement so you see the displacement is direction of the displacement is very important to determine the not only the value of work 
but a sign of that work. Again, let's uh, summarize it. Uh, if the force and displacement are in the same direction, then the work is positive. When they are in opposite direction, the work is negative. In this diagram, if the weight goes up the same direction of applied force, and the displacement is the same, so the work is positive. And when the weight goes down, so that's the displacement down, and the force is still up because that's your your applied force that you're holding that weight it is up they are in opposite direction that means that work done by applied force is negative in this case more examples if you have a box and you want to lift that up at the height h which is a displacement in this case so since that you are lifting it up against gravity with a constant velocity that means that that applied force that you are applying on a box or a normal force or a, it is going to be up and displacement is going to be up that means it is positive but if you at the same time if you want to uh, calculate work done by force of gravity which is down and you are lifting this up that is going to be negative so you are lifting it up making positive work and the gravity which is down always does a negative work now if you're lowering down the box from a certain height h to down then you are holding it and you still are holding against gravity that means that still applied force is m times g and displacement is h so the force that you are applying is m times g but this time the work that you are doing is negative because you are lowering down but you're holding it up is negative but the force of gravity in this case since the force of gravity is down and you are lowering down so that uh, displacement is going to be on that direction down that means the force of gravity in that second case will make a positive will do a positive work so that depends on the direction so the direction of the force and displacement determine the work sign for example if the apple goes down now the force of gravity does a positive work but if you're uh, toss that apple upward force of gravity still applies on that apple and still is downward but the motion of the apple is up and the force of gravity is down so this you can say work done by force of gravity is negative in this case force of gravity and displacement are at the same direction so work done by force of gravity is positive so the same force depends on the direction of the object will make positive or negative let's do an example a roping crane upward at a 45 degree pulls a suitcase a tension on a rope is 20 newton how much work does the tension do if the suitcase is pulled 100 meter so what is uh, what do we have tension is 20 angle is 45 degree displacement is 100 and what is required is a work formula is force displacement cosine theta so force now is tension which is 20 newton and displacement is 100 meter cosine 45 will give you 1414 joule or we can do the same thing by calculating uh, x component of that tension which actually do x component of the tension that does do a work that is along the displacement which is 14.14 14. 20 times cosine 45 is 14.14 14. and if you multiply by 100 will give you 1000 
414 joule. So pretty much is the same. It's the work done by a force at the certain angle is the same as done the work done by its component along that displacement. We have said it many, many times. Here is a proof. Here's another example. A 3,000 kilogram truck is loaded into a ship by a crane that exert an upward force of 31 kilonewton on a truck. This force is, which is large enough to overcome the gravitational force and keep the truck moving upward, is applied over a distance of 2 meter. So what is given? Mass is 3,000 kilogram, force is 31 kilonewton, and displacement is 2 meter. Work is required. So find the work done by a crane. So force of the crane is the same direction as displacement. So that means the cosine between those is zero. That means the cosine zero is one. That makes it positive. So it's a 31 kilonewton times two meter is 62 kilojoule. Next one is to find the work done by gravity. Force of gravity is in opposite direction of the motion delta dy. So they form a 180 degree angle in opposite direction. So that means that cosine of 180 is negative one, and that will make negative 58.8 kilojoule. So force of gravity is ma mass time gravitational acceleration. And the next one is find the net work. So some of those two works. You just add it up, but make sure positive and negative sign matters. So it's a 62 kilojoule minus plus minus 58.8 kilojoule. That'll make 3.2 kilojoule of energy. We can represent the work done by a force by plotting graphically magnitude of force on a y-axis and magnitude of displacement on an x-axis. This is known as a force position or FD graph. Work done is equal to a force time displacements or an area of the rectangle. If the force is constant is in a different segments, then we can split the graph on a known geographic figures or uh, rectangles and the work done by that force that is changing in a different segment is equal to area under the line of each segment. And you can add those together. Sometimes you can have a force that is a positive and force that is pr producing a negative work. If you want to add all work done to get a net work, you just have to add positive area and negative area of those uh, rectangles and uh, in this case for example network has to be negative because uh, negative work is bigger than positive work in this example so the equation that we learn work is equal force time displacement time cosine theta can only be used to calculate the mechanic work work done by an object when the force of an object is constant. If the force is changing, the work can be calculated using the graph. So area under the graph is work done. If that's as simple as a triangle, then you can use area under the graph, which is the average force times displacement. But if the graph is more complex and the line of the graph is a curve, then you can split that area under that line to a different rectangles as accurate as you can. And you add all those pieces together to give you the total work done by a force, changing force. And the smaller the rec uh, those rectangles and smaller the segment of displacement that you uh, do, the more accurate the work calculated is. Here's a practice problem. Calculating work done by a varying force. 
a force varies with x-axis as shown in a diagram. Find the work done by a force on particle as a particle moves from x 0 meter to x 6 meter. So you can split that in two areas, rectangle and triangle, and then find the areas for each of them. For a rectangle is 5 times 4, and for a triangle is a half of the 5 times 2, and then we have 20 joule plus 5 joule, 25 joule. Next one is a little bit more complex, but it's the same thing. Just calculate the areas for each individual geometric figures and then add them up. Now is your turn. Try it. Pause your video and try to find the total work done by that varying force. And if you get 26.5, then is the correct answer. And that's about it for 4.1, work done by a constant force. Have a good one.